within 25 years of joining as a kingdom community over the course of the, the, uh, these few days on started on Tuesday with a wonderful time with our project heritage um, display it was really, really excellent. And um, I've been on YouTube looking at it for a few times. <laughs> it's just so great. And uh, then later on in the evening, we had uh, our interaction, members sharing, core members sharing on highlights of the journey. I thought that went very well. And then Friday evening, we had a leadership interaction uh, with Wingroove Spencer and David Cup. That was really excellent. And, uh, and then uh, uh, we, um, later on, we had, or uh, yesterday, we had a man and a woman. Okay, so that went very well. It was a really, really excellent time in God. Uh, we have a number of visitors online, and uh, we want to um, I really give God thanks for all of our visitors. Later on in the meeting, we will, we will recognize them and welcome them and um, do what we have to do, okay? As soon as I get all of your names and where you're from and all of that from the greeters, I will welcome all of you. Okay. Um, I'm gonna. I was gonna do some stuff early this morning, but I'm gonna change up our um, what I had originally planned, and I just want us to go in the time of worship, adoration, and praise the God. And uh, so that's what we're going to do. All right. The Lord has been so good to us over the weekend. Very, really, really excellent, rich, rich time. Okay. I, I think we just flow into a time of worship. So I want you to stand where you are. Some of you are sitting together as families. We have people on the ground here at the center. Okay. Good to see Vivian. <laughs> I haven't seen Vivian for a while. And uh, a number of other families here. And then we have uh, the rest of you who are online. Good to see all of you. And uh, we will um, welcome you formally um, very soon, okay? At some point in the meeting, as soon as I get your information, I will recognize you all. But let's just lift our hands to the Lord and just give him praise. Father, we give you thanks for being with us. We thank you, Father, that you have walked with us. You have never left us alone for one day, not even for one hour, one minute, one second. You have been with us all along. So we celebrate your presence with us. We celebrate your presence with us, oh, Father. We celebrate your presence with us. Let's lift your hands to him and give him thanks. Give him praise. Lift your voices to him. Hallelujah. Come on. Hallelujah. Begin to lift your voices and worship to him. We magnify you, Father. 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 We magnify you. We magnify you. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. Come on, in your houses, in your homes, wherever you are. Begin to lift them up. Begin to magnify him. He's a good God and his mercy is endures forever. And ever and ever and ever. We praise you, Lord. We magnify you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, children. All the little children. 
Israel, lift your voices and begin to worship the Lord. Come on, Hebron Company. Women of Caris and Excel, lift your voices, Evolution. GPS young people, lift your voices. Gratitude. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. Hallelujah. Lift your voices. Hallelujah. God of the journey with us through changing times, changing seasons, changing emphases, 
changing ages, and always you are who you are. And Father, we rise to acknowledge you in your holiness, in your sovereignty, in your truthfulness. We worship you, our God, God of all times. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Yes. This is for you, Lord. Hallelujah.
Lord God Almighty, we sing holy, we say holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, we say holy, we say holy, we say holy is the Lord God Almighty, we worship you, O King. Hallelujah. 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 We want to thank you, God, for your enduring faithfulness along the way. God, you are the ultimate reward. And it is with pleasure, it is with delight, it is a sense of honor that we together come before you this morning to exalt and reverence your holy and your matchless name. We exalt you, oh God. We exalt you. Hallelujah. Yes. A wonderful Lord. Hallelujah. There is none like you. Oh Lord, our God, who's high above the heavens, forever you are, whose reach extends throughout. Eternity By whom and for whom By whom and for whom All things were created Who alone is lifted up Who alone is lifted up In majesty, majesty. We, we will, will never, never
unto everlasting, from everlasting unto everlasting. You are excellent in all of your ways, and we rise to declare your praises. We crown you with many praises, O oh God. How excellent are you, O oh God. In all of the earth you are excellent. We worship before your throne. We give you all the glory, eternal God. Rock of ages, God of our salvation. How excellent are you in all the earth. We magnify you. We honor you. We worship you. Hallelujah. One more song. Let's sing that song forever. 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 You'll be worshiping him forever. Just lift your hands and just open your eyes and continue to adore him. And worship our hearts are filled with gratitude. Oh, we magnify you. You are an excellent God. Oh, we worship you. We bless your name, Father. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Our hearts are filled with gratitude. Our hearts are filled with thanksgiving. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Father. We worship you. We worship you in our homes. We worship you here together. At the center, we bless your name, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Uh, who else do we have but you, Lord? You are our forever. You are our forever. You are our strength. You are our joy. You are everything, Father, we can ever want or desire. It is you. It is you, Lord God. God, we will look not to the right nor to the left. We only look to you, our forever, our forever. Oh, we thank you. You are my strength. You are my shield. My confidence. I put my trust in My deepest joy, my hiding place, forever I exalt you, Lord. I worship you, I worship you, I exalt.
as we do is stop, your worship will go on forever. Amen. Lord, we'll be worshiping him forever. When you worship, you're practicing forever behavior. Things that occupy our minds will cease. But your worship will go on forever. Amen. We'll always lift our hearts up forever. Worship God is like, I'm denying the earth. I'm denying time. I'm denying death. I deny mortality. Some things already are everlasting in my human experience. And your worship will continue forever. Our life, you are everything, and we bless your name now and forever, forevermore, forevermore, forever and ever, forevermore. We worship you. We worship you, Lord. 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 We worship you. We worship you. We worship you. We worship you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. We worship you. We bless your name. None can be compared to you, Father. You are magnificent. You are faithful. You are consistent. Oh, we bless your name, Father. We bless your name, Father. Lift your hands in one more time and bless him. Wherever you are, lift your hands in one more time. He's a faithful, faithful God. Never left us alone. Always holding our hands, always guiding us. Always correcting us and chasing us with love. Let's just worship him one more minute. Bless your name, Father. We bless your name, Father. We bless your name, Father. Thank you, Father. We bless your name. We 
blessing name of Father. Hallelujah. Can we see? Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, just want to generally welcome everyone, but um, I'm going to do a detailed welcome later on. But I would like us to flow straight into um, our keynote presentation for the day, and after that, I will welcome everyone. We have places from all over the place. We welcome all of you and greet you all. But I want to make way at this time for our oversight coordinator, Wingrove Spencer. Um, Wingrove has been working with us for many years, guiding us, correcting us, helping us, um, being a friend to us. Um, Wingrove and Valerie Spencer. Um, we just want to honor them and appreciate them. Uh, Wingrove was here with us on Friday evening um, when we had a leadership development interaction. Valerie was part of a tremendous meeting with our woman yesterday. Okay? Really, really fantastic interaction with the Lord. And, uh, <clears throat> and, uh, and uh, so we are back here this morning. And we want to give them that time. Afterwards, we will welcome all of our guests. We want to recognize you, so don't run away. And, um, and then we meet again this afternoon for part two of this celebration, right? This um, corporate celebration, 4 p.m. this evening, this afternoon. Okay? Uh, we, we have our, our corporate gathering on Tuesday evening, um, PLC members at... Um, 7 to 2 p.m. We have some stuff to deal with, um, some interactions and reviews. So please keep that in mind, all right? But at this time, I'd like us to welcome Wingrove Spencer. Wingrove, good to have you. Valerie, good to have you. Let's welcome them. Thank you, Wesley. Thank you, Wesley. And uh, Good morning to Philadelphia Life Center. Always a pleasure to be with you. Just before lockdown in 2020, it was my last trip was in Jamaica and it was with Philadelphia Life Center as you were renamed from Northgate to PLC. And I remember that trip very much for many reasons. And actually, it was my, since then, Valerie and I have made one trip. And that was in November, December, for the wedding of our second son. And so after visiting Philadelphia Life Center in February of 2019, so February of 2020, that was, that was it. And we are very, very pleased to be with you this weekend. It's also a pleasure to see, you know, a touch of love ministries as well, Claudette Baisden and the saints of a touch of love ministries. Always a pleasure seeing you guys. And, you know, I'm really, really pleased with the support given to Wesley over this weekend. Earlier on, I saw Joel Morton. I don't know if he's still on, but Joel and those some cutting edge in St. Kitts. A pleasure seeing you guys as well. You know, it's amazing the way our Congress is and the support, care and love offered to each other really great and all others great to have you this morning 
Great to have you. Let me share my screen at this time. Are you seeing my screen? Where's? Yes, nice and beautiful. Let's go on um, presentation. Say again? Let's need to go on presentation mode. Okay, and do you see, did it change? Not as yet. Say again? Not as yet. Not as yet, okay, so. The same thing is happening today. Let me try again. Are you seeing it? Yeah, that's good now. Yeah. Okay. Seem to be a problem. I have to do it twice for it to work, but needed to check before I continued. But it's really an honor. You know, I really appreciate. Wesley and his wife, we have been working very closely together, Wesley and Angela, for many of those 25 years. And it's all joy. And to share this weekend with you has been a real pleasure for us. This weekend, we have been looking at the theme, looking back for forward momentum, looking back for forward momentum. And on the journey, we have captured and developed the awesome power of momentum. And I know that's the heart of the leaders and saints of PLC to maintain and even increase momentum going forward. And so you are now looking back in order to increase that momentum going forward. Now, one of the driving forces behind our momentum is the involvement of the saints in the kingdom community of PLC in KCN Jamaica, and also inside of the Congress prayer initiatives. When I spoke on Friday evening, I highlighted the issue of prayer and we dealt mainly with the issue of synchronization and alignment. And this morning we will be highlighting prayer as well. It's a very important and powerful and major issue inside of our kingdom communities. And so it is important we look at it going forward. And so my looking back for forward momentum, we are doing so in that beautiful and important area of prayer. <clears throat> in our looking back for forward momentum, we will do a cursory scan through some of these prayer initiatives that are pivotal to our journey. And I want to just remind us of some kingdom-based initiative in your KC there in Jamaica, Philadelphia Life Center. Now, prior to that name, we all know you were Northgate. And so Northgate Core team had a prayer initiative. And the team was divided into groups and the group members prayed and fasted each day of the week, except on Sundays. Powerful interaction. And you know, Dr. Woodruff reminded us about the prayer engine of the Congress. And we can see the prayer engine of Philadelphia Life Center inside of this initiative. Also, the core team there is usually a half hour governmental prayer segment when the core team meets. And so we are highlighting a very pivotal aspect of community life, of the journey. And this is the area of prayer. And it was built very strongly inside of Philadelphia 
Life Center. At the KCN Jamaica level, members of Philadelphia Life Center and the other communities were divided into groups. And these groups met and prayed on a gender-based basis. Several of those groups are still meeting on a monthly basis, even until this day. And I want to say special commendations to you because the prayer engine is very, very important that must be kept moving if we are to sustain our momentum forward. Then there was the Casey and Jamaica prayer day, and it was a day of worship and prayer conducted a few months before the transaction event way back there in 2012, the core global transaction event of our Congress in 2017, and I remember this so clearly, we had a Northern Caribbean governmental prayer initiative and that was held in April of 2017. And it was, here we see the theme. Here we are seeing some photos of Philadelphia Life Center during that prayer initiative. Are you seeing the photos? Seen them. Okay. Intense words. Beautiful Philadelphia Life Center in action. And we're talking about prayer and the saints interacting and praying with each other. A beautiful, beautiful sight. And I just, we are looking back for forward momentum. Some of these little children must be much bigger now. And you know, Claudette, I didn't leave you out a couple of photos from a touch of love in that initiative as well. Praying in our governmental prayer of the Northern Caribbean in 2017. And then we have our Congress prayer initiatives. And I'm just taking us a cursory glance we would remember June of 2012 when we had the core global transaction event. And here we have the, 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 the PowerPoint. We have made the journey and we are here. That's June 2012. And I know Philadelphia Life Center participated and we prayed as one man and prayer like rolling thunder swept across the earth and penetrated deep into the spirit realm. Then in October of 20 and 2016, there was the Congress Day of Fast, Prayer and Fasting, theme a call to reformation. And in that, it was a unique day for us as Congress WBN all across the earth when thousands of churches gathered together and stood in a day of prayer and fasting before the Lord. And this was done in preparation for the global governmental prayer event or the GGPE, which was held one week after in 2016. And we are just taking a scan of the prayer events because it's so important, such an important part of our development and our journey. The global governmental prayer event directed massive and aggressive prayer into the heavens to disrupt, destroy, and shatter strategic plans of the enemy and cause the satanic system to be unable to mobilize 
resources to impede the movement of the spirit to the end of time. And we all participated in that event. Then we can recall in October of 2019, the Global Day of Offering, the Global Day of Offering and how we prepared for that day. And in our communities, we had this exhibition of our journey then to 2016, to the Global Day of Offering. And of course, we fast forward to the Knox and there was Knox number one in September of 2021, theme a shout from within the crisis. We were already in lockdown from the coronavirus crisis, the pandemic, and we had not number one in September of 2021. Inside of that knock, Dr. Woodruff in his presentation said something very interesting. And you know, it speaks also to the issue of momentum. And so I placed it here, Dr. Woodruff said, this knock is a proclamation that a muscular and a mature church is rising in the earth. Now we know that speaking of the body of Christ, but it's also speaking of, 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 of Philadelphia Life Center. It's speaking of a touch of love. It's speaking of cutting edge. It's speaking of our different communities across the region and across the Congress. A muscular and mature church is arising in the earth to secure the name of the Lord and to fulfill his eternal plans. This not, not, not number one indicates that from this point, there will be direct and aggressive momentum going forward without retreat and without any diminishing. And we know rather than things diminishing for us, it keeps increasing. And that's the kingdom principle because scripture teaches that the kingdom is ever increasing. Of the increase of its government, there will be no end. And so we are always in that upward trajectory. And during our review here in our 25th year and our celebrations of 25 beautiful years of journey, we are reviewing so that we can move forward aggressively after this weekend. Then we move to March 2021 of our knock number two, a holy cry from a global civilization. And then we had knock number three in December of 2021. And we know Dr. Woodruff has already announced knock number four, and we are in preparation mode for knock number four, which is the harvest knock. A beautiful journey with, and you know, these are just prayer initiatives at a kingdom community level, at the KCN level, and at the Congress level. And I know we have been praying much inside of our families. We have been praying much within our people groups. We have been praying even our, as individuals and ever so often Dr. Woodruff would admonish us to offer up our prayers, our prayers. And we are always praying. And of course, we recently, Dr. Woodruff shared with us that our prayers, you know, it goes up as dense incense and fill the atmosphere in the heavenly realm. And we will continue to do so. And we are highlighting this aspect of our journey. Dr. Woodruff, he often repeats this phrase, it is the power of the journey that has forged us and made us strong. It is the power of the journey that has forged us and made us strong. In knock number three, the saints of the Congress filled the atmosphere around the heaven, lit on with a dense and a holy smoke and fragrance. 
Now, coming out of knock number three, the Lord spoke to Precision Center. That's my kingdom community. The Lord spoke to us a very simple yet profound word that we have been unpacking as part of our community emphasis. And it was 2022, the year of persistence and insistence. And of course, this is in the context of prayer. And I am sharing with you this morning some of the things that he spoke to us about. And so we will be talking about persistence and insistence prayer nuggets. Some nuggets, important pointers that we need to carry with us during our journey to knock number two, during in gathering and whatever takes place beyond in our Congress. We will be persistent and insistent, and we will be looking at some of the prayer nuggets of persistence and insistence. And the first nugget that I would like to leave with you is always pray and never give up. Nugget number one, always pray and never give up. In Luke chapter 18, it was Jesus speaking to his disciples. And I'm reading from the New Living Translation. One day, Jesus told his disciples a story to show that they always, they should always pray and never give up. This is Jesus sharing with his disciples. And he wanted to communicate a very important message, which is one of our nuggets today. You should always pray and never give up. And in order to communicate that principle, that nugget, he went into a story. And this is the story. There was a judge in a certain city. He said, who neither feared God nor cared about people. A widow of that city came to him repeatedly saying, give me justice in this dispute with my enemy. The judge ignored her for a while, but finally he said to himself, I don't fear God or care about people, but this woman is driving me crazy. Why? She is persistent. She's not giving in. This is what he said. This woman is driving me crazy and I'm going to see that she gets justice because she's wearing me out with her constant request. This is Jesus sharing this story with the disciples wanting to emphasize how important it is to always pray and never give up. And he's trying to say to them, you do the same thing to God. Jive God crazy. Wear God down. And I want us to be doing that inside of Philadelphia Life Center, inside of the people groups, inside of the growth groups, inside of the families, each individual, we are going to insist and persist in our prayers, driving God crazy or wearing him down until he responds. Verse six, the Lord, after telling the story, now he said to them, learn a lesson from this unjust judge. Even the unjust judge rendered a just decision in the end. So don't you think your God, Philadelphia Life Center, an unjust judge rendered a just 
decision because the woman was driving him crazy. The woman was wearing him out. The woman persisted and she insisted that she received justice. And God, Jesus is saying to the disciples, don't you think that your God will surely give justice to his chosen people who cry out to him day and night? Will he keep putting them off? And he said, I tell you, he will grant you justice quickly. And I want us to hear this this morning. Whatever you're going to God about, as a community, your people groups, as individuals, as families, keep on persisting and insisting. He will grant justice quickly. We are doing it at the Congress level. That's why we keep knocking and knocking and knocking. We are going to wear him out knowing he will grant us justice quickly. Knock at number two, your transactions with God behind the scenes secure the future of your loved ones. And you know, this is one of the things that really came home to me very strongly in knock number three. In knock number three, as we spoke about in gathering, and as Dr. Woodruff spoke about the issue of the judgment, and we start calling forth judgment, the issue of the body of Christ coming to completion and all members who are a part of the body of Christ coming in, that really resonated in me. And more so, our of members of our families, members of you know, friends, co-workers and others who are a part of the body of Christ, but they have not yet come in. And I'm sure many of us this morning in this session, there are persons whom you have been praying over, there are persons whom you're concerned about because you, and these persons are your siblings, these persons may be your children, these persons may be other family members, friends, co-workers, you name it. These persons, you are fully convinced that they are part of the body of Christ, even though they have not yet made a, a, a decision or they have made a decision, but they, are sla they have slackened up and you are in there praying for them. And so your prayers, your transaction or your prayers with God behind the scenes will secure the future of your loved ones. And we want to look at Abraham and Lot this morning to, to highlight this nugget. This is Luke chapter 17, and it's Jesus once again speaking. In Luke chapter 17, verses 28 and 29, from the New King James Version, Jesus says, as it was also in the days of Lot, we know he was, he spoke of the days of, 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 of the days of Moses, but he's, also the days of Noah, but he's now speaking of the days of Lot. They ate, they drank, you know, life as usual. But on the day that Lot went out, notice that, on the day that Lot went out, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. And we are told we are living in those days as it was then, so will it be. And it was on the day that Lot went out that fire and brimstone rained down. Now it was Abraham's transaction with God behind the scenes that secured the exit of Lot and his family. Look at Genesis chapter 19, verses 27 to 29. Abraham, we know he had an interaction with God. God was on his way to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. But before doing so, he had a conversation with Abraham. And Abraham 
persisted and insisted that God could not destroy the righteous with the wicked. And he wanted to ensure that his family members down in Sodom were not destroyed. And he spoke to God and he was able, he insisted and brought it down from 50 to 10. We know the story quite well. And after he brought it down to 10, he left. And we get to now verse 27. The morning after, Abraham got up early and hurried out to the place where he had stood in the Lord's presence. He looked out across the plain towards Sodom and Gomorrah and watched as columns of smoke rose from the cities like smoke from a furnace. Look at verse 29, a beautiful verse. It says, but God had listened to Abraham's request and kept Lot safe. Let me repeat that. But God had listened to Abraham's request and kept Lot safe, removing him from the disaster that engulfed the cities on the plain. Abraham interacted with God. He persisted, he insisted, and in his persistence and his insistence, that kept Lot saved. You know, you can put your name there. God listened to Wesley and heard his request and kept the people he's praying for safe. God listened to Claudette. God listened to the different members of the community, whoever you are and whoever you are praying for inside of your family. We are talking in this, in this nugget of our families, of you know, whether parents praying for children, whether it's for our brothers and our sisters, cousins, you name it, or family members, friends, co-workers, persons who, you know, they're in your heart, you carry them, you carry them and you are praying for them just as Abraham, as we persist and insist, God is listening. God had listened to Abraham's request and kept Lot safe, removing him from the disaster that engulfed the cities of the plague. So a question to us this morning, how many of our family members, loved ones, friends, whose names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life are still trapped in the Babylonian system. Our prayers behind the scenes will secure their release, will save them. Our persistent requests will remove them from the pending judgment and keep them safe. Just as Abraham, our hearts are burdened for them and we will work behind the scenes to release them and set them free so they take their place within the body of Christ and serve the Lord. Our prayers behind the scenes. You know, you know, Jesus spoke about that to his disciples as well. He said, when you pray, don't be like the hypocrites. You know, you just shut your door. And when the door is shut, pray to your father in secret. And your father who hears in secret will reward you openly. And that's what we see with Abraham. He interacted just him and God alone. But God rewarded him openly and saved Lot. Our family members, you name them, they too must get out before the judgment falls. But I want to spend a few minutes to look at the starting point of Lot issues. Because we are told as it was in the days of Lot, so will it be. And some of us may end up in that Lot situation that the prayers of others that may snatch you out. And we do not want that to be so. It was so for Lot 
And this is the reason Genesis 13 verse 12 tells us, Abraham lived in the land of Canaan. Here we knew the situation quite well. Abraham and Lot were together. The Lord was blessing them and the blessings made it, made it impossible for them to live together. And so Gabriel said, let's separate. And in the separation, Lot chose, you know, chose the Sodom and Gomorrah, the plains of Sodom and Gomorrah. And here we see Lot lived among the cities of the plain and pitched his tents near Sodom. He pitched his tents near Sodom. Look at verse 13. Now the men of Sodom were wicked and were sinning greatly against the Lord. And so he pitched his tent close to the wickedness. He pitched his tent close to Babylon. He pitched his tent. And this morning, we will not pitch our tent near the darkness. Come on, we will not pitch our tent near the darkness. This action by Lord placed him and his family in the pathway towards the judgment of God. He pitched his tent near the wickedness and the darkness of Sodom. He pitches them near the wickedness and darkness of Sodom. The thing about it here in Genesis chapter 14, we see not he pitched, it started out with his him pitching his tent near, but notice here there was a war between kings, four kings against five kings. And Lot was with the group from the king, with the king of Sodom. And here we are told at birth in verse 12 that these kings took away Abraham's nephew Lot and his possession while he was living in Sodom. He started out by pitching his tent near. Now we see him living in Sodom. You see, he had the wrong focus at the time of impending and imminent danger. And I want to say to us this morning, saints of Philadelphia Life Center, of A Touch of Love Ministries, and all those here this morning, do not pitch your tent near Sodom. Do not pitch your tent near education. Do not pitch your tent near economics. Do not pitch your tent near, near, near status and these things. Yes, they are important, but you pitch your tent inside of the kingdom and kingdom positions. Jesus told the disciples that all these things, the nations of the earth seek after, the fame, the fortune, the status, the education, and these things. And your heavenly father knows that you have need of them. But if you pitch your tent near the kingdom of God or in the kingdom of God and righteousness, these things will be added unto you. So you don't go after those things. You go after the kingdom positions. And as you do that, these things will be added. Lord should have pitched his tent near the purposes of God and the other things would have been added to him. And so word to our young parents, especially our young Hebronites, pay close attention to where you pitch your tent. Very important, that was the, the issue that placed Lot, a righteous man. We are told he was a righteous man, but his righteous soul was vexed from day to day. Why? He's inside of the mess and he saw the wickedness of the people and it affected him. We will be in the world, but not of the world. Our address is the kingdom and we are not moved or we are not pitching our tent anything close of the kingdom of God. So pitch your tent to ensure, and we are speaking to our young Hebronites, pitch your tent to ensure that your children are protected and shielded from the darkness of Babylon. 
Lot did not do that. He pitched his tent near Sodom. He then ended up living in Sodom. And of course, we saw what happened to him, his wife, and his children. Amazing. It all started with where he pitched his tent. That thing deep in his heart that moved him and sustained him. And so I am encouraging you, pitch your tent to ensure your children are protected and shielded from the darkness of Babylon. Pitch your tent to ensure that they will never be in the path of the judgment of God. Pitch your tent to ensure they have a great appreciation for the word of the Lord, worship and prayer. Abraham was very persistent and insistent in securing Lot and his family. And that's what we are doing as well in this season. And as we go forth, they will do so with momentum. You could read Genesis 18, 20 to 33, when Abraham was negotiating with God. And it is that time interacting with God, he persisted and he insisted the righteous will not be destroyed with the wicked. And he saved Lot. Nugget number three. Our prayers ascend as a memorial to God. Come on, you are praying. And Philadelphia Life Center I know you have been praying and you will be praying more. Wesley, I know you are praying. I know your love and your care for the pastors inside of Jamaica and inside of those islands that you, 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 you facilitate the work of the Congress. I know what's in your heart, brother. Let me say to you, your prayers are ascending to God as a memorial ascending as a memorial. And I want all of us to understand this this morning and really persist and insist, have that increased momentum in the area of prayer going forward because as we pray, our prayers ascend as a memorial unto God, a memorial offering before the Lord. It was the persistent prayers of a Roman centurion soldier. This guy was not a Jew. He was not a believer, but he persisted in prayer. And it, is what, it was his persistent prayer that activated the necessary partnership with God to earn his divine purpose for the Gentiles. Actually, it was the prayer of this guy why we are in. Because as we know, we are not born Jews. And so normally we would not be in. But then this centurion soldier, he persisted. And we'll be looking at, at, in, at it in a moment. The Gentiles were given full access as members of the body of Christ. They received the salvation and the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Let's turn to Acts chapter 10. At Caesarea, there was a man named Cornelius. A centurion in what was known as the Italian regiment. He and all his family, this guy is a Ebonite, he and all his family were the devout and God fearing. He also gave generously to those in need, and he prayed to God regularly. One day, he persisted, and one day, at about three in the afternoon, he had a vision. He distinctly saw an angel of God who came to him and said, Cornelius, Cornelius teared at him, in fear, what is it, Lord, he asked. The angel answered, your prayers and your gifts to the poor 
have come up as a memorial offering before God. Isn't this beautiful? Your, this is a young man, a Gentile, but something in him was activated before God and towards God. And so he prayed regularly. He was persistent. And in his persistence, one day something happened. An angel, an angel presented himself. And the angel told him, your prayers and your gifts have come up as a memorial offering before God. Now a memorial speaks to a reminder, a record. So every time this guy prayed, a record was built. There was something that caused God to think about what he has said, caused God to remember. And that memorial was built. I want us building memorials inside of PLC as a community. I want the people groups and the growth groups to be building memorials before God. So that at every turn, God is seeing that monument, that memorial built. Cornelius persistent prayers and gifts to the poor constructed a monument before God which served as a constant reminder that a positive response was necessary. And that's what we are doing. That's what we are doing in the knots. And we have knot number one, knot number two, knot number three, and we are going back with knot number four, and we will build such a massive memorial that nothing is in the mind of God more than to respond. And he already said he is not unjust. He already told us that he will respond speedily. And so we continue to build memorials. And this is the response, the divine response. God, the angel told him, the Lord says, send men to Joppa to bring back a man by the name of Simon Peter. He is staying with Simon the Tanner, whose house is by the sea. Do you see the details? And all this is because a Gentile man built a memorial before God. A Gentile man was persistent in his prayers, always praying and never giving up. When the angel who spoke to him had gone, Cornelius called two of his servants and a devout soldier who was one of his attendants. And he told them everything that had happened and sent them to Joppa. Now look what's happening here. About noon the following day, as they were on their journey and approaching the city, Peter went up on the roof to pray. This is not coincidence. This is all happening as a result of this guy's persistence and insistence. That he persisted and that God dispatched an angel to speak to him. The angel gave him the message and he now sent two of his men. And while they were on their way, at the same time, God was working on the other side, preparing Peter to receive them. Because we know Peter was a Jew and that hegemon was there that Jews do not interact by law with Gentiles. Amazing all that came out of one man's persistent way. Peter is an apostle, but he is an apostle with a bias towards the Gentiles. And this man's prayer broke down all of that. So Peter was in the roof way. He became hungry and went, wanted something to eat. And while the meal was being prepared, he fell in a chance. He saw heaven open and something like a large sheep being let down to the earth. 
by its four corners. It contained all kinds of four-footed animals, as well as reptiles of the earth and birds of the air. Then a voice told him, get up, Peter, kill and eat the voice. And this whole episode is seeking to dismantle Peter's, you know, bias towards the Gentiles so he will be able to go and interact. It's amazing all this because of the persistence of one man, a Gentile centurion. So Peter, of course, he said, surely, Lord, you know, I've never eaten anything impure or unclean. The voice said to him a second time, do not call anything impure that God has made clean. This happened three times, and immediately the sheet was taken back to heaven. While Peter was still thinking about the vision, the spirit said to him, Simon, three men are looking for you. Do you see the length God is going to have the message? coming to the Gentiles because there was one man persisting and insisting in his prayers. I'm hoping that we don't have any little biases that God is seeking to dismantle so that we can open the way and the path for persons to come in. Family members, let there be no bias. Let us be open and understand they are all God's creation. No matter who they are, they too are to be in the kingdom. And so Peter went down. The man says to Peter, we have come from Cornelius, the centurion. He's a righteous and God-fearing man who is respected by all the Jewish people. A holy angel told him to have you come to his house so that he could hear what you have to say. Then Peter invited the men into the house to be his guest. The next day, Peter started out with them and some of the brothers from Joppa went along. The following day, he arrived in Caesarea. Cornelius was expected, was expecting them and had called together his relatives and close friends. As Peter entered the house, Cornelius met him and fell at his feet in reference but Peter made him get up, stand up. He said, I'm only a man myself. Talking with him, Peter went inside and found a large gathering of people. He said to them, you're well aware. <laughs> you are well aware that it is against our law. See what God had to break down and dismantle. But all this, let's not lose sight of that. All this activated by a, Ro a Roman centurion who persistently prayed. Here they're saying, Jew Gentiles are not to enter in. He knew he was a Gentile and he persisted. And one day, one day, in his persistence, God answered speedily. And not only did God answer, God is now dismantling. And this is an apostle of God. This is a man who walked with Jesus, interacted with Jesus, yet he had this thing that he held on to, which was just Jewish. And God said, let me dismantle it. And he's now explaining, you are well aware that it is against our law for a Jew to associate with a Gentile or visit him. That's the Jewish law, but not God's law. And so he said, but God has shown me that I should not call any man, any man impure or unclean. Do not look down on anyone. Don't look down on anyone. So when I was sent for, I came without raising objection. He couldn't object any longer. May I ask why you sent for me? And of course, 
Pete Simon explained. And his explanation leads us to nugget number four. Our prayers activate the suddenly reality. And Dr. Woodruff taught us about the suddenly reality in the ABR process. The suddenly reality. Look at what Cornelia said. Four days ago, I was in my house praying at this hour at three in the afternoon. And suddenly, a man in shining clothes stood before me and said, Cornelius, God has heard your prayer. And God remembered. Do you remember that memorial gift? He remembered your gifts to the poor. So the suddenly reality, extracts from the ABR part one, when the usual order of things is disrupted by massive intrusion from another dimension, causing the flow of time to shift and change. That what took place. And we are expecting the suddenly reality as we move forward with momentum, as we continue to pray, we are expecting suddenly reality to interject and to cause the disruption of a massive intrusion into the normal flow of things. Dr. Woodruff went on every time suddenly occurs, the normal flow of time, events, and reality are severely disrupted, and we move to the new expectation and a new excellent plate. He also said, suddenly breaks the laws that locks our mind into the dominating sequence of the earth. That's what Peter experienced, that suddenly reality it unlocked his mind from that frequency of the earth which says the Jews do not interact or visit Gentiles. Look at Peter. We saw it in verse 28. You are well aware that it is against our law for a Jew to associate with a Gentile or visit him. But the suddenly reality broke that law. In Acts 15, 1 to 5, and we know that, sorry, Acts 11, 1 to 5, the apostles and brothers of Judah had heard that the Gentiles also had received the word. So when Peter went up to Jerusalem, the circumcised believers criticized him. They were holding on, and Peter had to pray, explain to them what happened. Do you see they're highlighting the law? You went into the house of uncircumcised men and ate with them. Peter began and explained everything to them precisely as it happened. And this is what Peter said after he explained it. So if God gave them the same gift as he gave us who believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I to think that I could oppose God. When they heard this, they had no further objections and they too praised the Lord. So then God has granted even the Gentiles repentance unto life. And the activating power of all of this, a Gentile, a Roman centurion, who he and his family persisted in prayer before God. Nugget number five, our prayers are treated equally by God. He shows no favoritism. Let me repeat this, because this speaks to many of us. Sometimes we think that only certain people have direct route to God or he listens more and listens keenly to some and not to others. Let me tell you, this was a powerful revelation for Peter that God shows no favoritism. He treats everyone equal. This is what Peter said. 
I now realize how true it is. So this was a saying he knew, but then is religious and Jewish culture, he couldn't fathom it. But after going through this experience, he said, I now realize how true it is that God does not show favoritism, but accepts men from every nation who fear him and do what is right. Let me say to us this morning, God shows no favoritism, none. They're not, you know, I'm sure there's some persons who, you know, like in Christian Center, there's some guys who, man, when they pray, people think that, oh my, they have direct access to God. And so they're intimidated by it. I'm sure it's so in different communities. I don't think Precision Center is unique. And they believe that, you know, and we, some of us grew up in that environment. I grew up in an environment that, you know, in the, in the, in the, in the morning worship service, if they used to refer to it as the divine worship service. And inside of that service, only certain people could be called on to pray. And I'm telling you, when they, I remember when they started calling on me to pray. Man, something in me said, you have arrived. What craziness. And of course, I'm sure some of you listening were inside of situations like that, that only the who is who given position, given opportunity. Well, it's not so in the kingdom. God shows no favoritism. And we know in our Congress, everything Dr. Woodruff is always saying, it is the saints. The saints carry the Lord. Nothing moves without the saints. And in every knock, there are segments where the saints, the saints, and in knock number four, it will be no different. All the saints. And I want all, every saint, no matter who you are, no matter what you have been told, dismantle everything this morning and understand that you are as important to God as Wesley Boyan is, as Dr. Noel Woodbrook is, as any one of us. Let me tell you, he shows no favoritism, no favorites. No, none more special. He will do it to everyone, to everyone. I want this to really be something of encouragement to those of you who always want to stay in the background and feel as though, oh, it doesn't. No, let me tell you, you are a part of the body and each part must do its share. That's what Ephesians 4, 16 tells us. That as each part does its own special work, it causes the body to grow. So each part, each member has a special work. Understand that. Now the work may not be what Wesley does. It may not be what someone else is doing but it is a special work. It is as special as what Wesley does. I want us to understand this. So if you call it menial, you see, it's because in the world, they have built a system which seeks to highlight and magnify some above others. And that thing has, set, has crept into the church that's why we do not do it in the Congress. So in the church, man, you have these men who are apostles and, and of course they're calling them apostles so-and-so and prophets so-and-so and ministers so-and-so. But then you have a grave digger in your, in your church and why don't you say grave digger so-and-so? That will never be done because that's the meaning. No, nothing is the meaning in the sight of God. 
all are important and necessary and valuable. I remember one time in Antigua, there was a there was a strike. The 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 these guys, you know, the 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 correct name isn't coming to me, but I'll just use what we normally say the the garbage collectors. They see that I they have a nice, beautiful name, something technician. But we refer to them as garbage collectors in a derogatory manner. And they, they had a strike in Antigua. And during the strike, they were on the way, the radio and television, telling people how important and valuable they are. Because if that strike were to go on for two weeks, come on, do you know what would happen to, 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 the, to the nation? And we see that, and it spoke, Paul spoke about it with the body as well, that no part is less than the other. If the eye were to say, because I'm not the hand, I have no need of the no, we are all important, no favorites. But in every nation, God accepts men who fear him and do what is right. Fear the Lord and do what is right. You are accepted and you are as legitimate as anyone else. The same situation in Acts 15 when the church, when, when the saints, you can recall that story quite well. Paul and a few of the guys went down to the Gentiles and they preached Christ and significant things took place. And because of that, the, 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 uh, the circumcised Jews were having difficulties. And so they called this special council meeting in Acts chapter 15. And they came to that meeting. And of course, Paul and guy, the guys spoke. Some others spoke. Then Peter said, God who knows the heart shows showed that he accepted the Gentiles by giving them the Holy Spirit, just as he did to us. He made no distinction between us and them, for he purified their hearts by faith. And Peter, it's always Peter. Listen to Peter again in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 17. Remember that the heavenly Father to whom you pray has no favorites. Remember the heavenly father to whom you pray has no favorites. He will judge you or he will reward you according to what you do. And so what we are going to do, we are going to live in reverent fear during our time as foreigners here on earth. He shows no favorites. And here is John. John is saying, we are confident that he hears us whenever we ask for anything that pleases him. And since we know he hears us when we make our requests, we also know that he will give us what we ask for. So we'll ensure that we, everything is according to his will. Everything pleases him. And we know it will be done. He shows no favorites. And nugget number six, our righteous lifestyle make our prayers powerful and successful. It's the way we live. He shows no favorites. But once we live righteously before him, our prayers are powerful and successful. In James chapter five, Starting at verse 16, James says, the prayer of a righteous man, and you can place your name here, the prayer of a righteous man, the message Bible says a person living right is powerful and effective. Then he went in to, to show this with one of the righteous men, Elijah. And he said, Elijah was a man just like us. He was no superhuman. He was not afraid. He was a man just like you and I. 
These things should really build our faith and our confidence in God. These things should assist us in seeing ourselves correctly before him. Because Elijah, when we go to heaven and we see these guys, when they know we are not going to have our earthly mentality, but if we had our earthly mentality, I'm telling you, we would all be surprised and shocked because they're going to be ordinary men, just like you and I, ordinary people. See, Babylon built up these things and we have, you know, been overcome by them. But God is seeking to dismantle it so that we see ourselves correctly and each one of us play our part. And he's saying, Elijah was a man just like us. Where is he? He was a righteous man just like us as well. And so he prayed earnestly that it would not rain and what happened? It did not rain on the land for three and a half years. Again, he prayed. And guess what? The heavens gave rain and the earth produced its crop. A man just like us, but he was righteous. And in 1 Kings chapter 18, we read that story of Elijah when he prayed. And the beautiful thing about it is that Elijah took up a, pos a posture in the earth. He bowed low to the ground and prayed with his face between his knees. And he sent his servant and he told his servant, go and look out toward the sea. The servant went and looked, then returned to Elijah and said, I didn't see anything. But Elijah sent him back and seven times he said, go and look. Do you see the persistence coming through? And Elijah persisted. Time number one, the guy went, looked, nothing happened. Elijah said, go back again. And he kept praying. Time number two, he went out, he returned, nothing happened. Elijah told him, go back and look again. And he kept praying. He persisted. And guess what? Finally, the seventh time, when the guy came, he said, I saw a little cloud, a little cloud about the size of a man's hand rising from the sea. And that was the cue Elijah needed, the physical evidence he needed that just what he declared was happening because he persisted and he insisted. But the thing that made that possible for Elijah was his righteous lifestyle. And I want to say to every one of us this morning, live a righteous life before God, a life that is aligned to his purposes, aligned to his requirements, a life that is perpendicular. And we do that. And these nuggets, we carry them with us and we continue. We go into knock number four and we pray knowing, knowing that he hears us. We pray in knock number four and beyond, and we continue, and we'll be praying for those of our relatives who have not yet come in. They have not yet, but we know they've got to be in. Our prayers behind the scene, our prayers behind the scene are bringing them in. And so those are the six nuggets. We spent the time this morning just looking back at the prayer initiatives, and I couldn't highlight all. I highlighted some from the Kingdom Community Philadelphia Life Center. And I commend you, commend you. You're doing a great and awesome, a wonderful job. We looked at some of the prayer initiatives at the KCN level in Jamaica and the Northern Caribbean. 
Then we looked at the global prayer initiatives of our Congress, and we are praying, we are praying. Then we highlighted some nuggets. Always pray, never give up. Know that your prayers in the background, in secret, you're carrying these people in your heart and you're constantly and persistently reaching out on their behalf. Know and understand God is hearing your prayers. And the Father who is in secret will reward you openly. We are told Lot was kept safe because God answered Abraham's prayer. We saw a centurion soldier building memorials as he prayed persistently to God. And think something that should not have happened, happened. And I say should not in the context of the Jewish community. They felt this could never happen. But it happened because this guy was persistent. This guy persisted. We looked at the suddenly reality. Our prayers activate the suddenly reality. And I'm sure many of us have experienced that suddenly reality in response to our prayers. These things work. No favorites. No favorites. You play your part and live righteous lives. Father, we give you thanks this morning. Thank you for Philadelphia Life Center and the journey. Thank you for Wesley Boyens, a young man who grew up in Trinidad. But Father, you took him over to Jamaica and he carries Jamaica in his heart even more than he carries his homeland. He carries the people. I know it. We have had many discussions. We know how he carries the body of Christ, not just Philadelphia Life Center. Yes, that's the dimension of the body of Christ that you're giving him to give direct oversight. But Father, he carries the entire body of Christ in his heart. We know how his heart yearns and groans over the pastors in that nation and how he wishes that their eyes will be open, they would see and understand where God is and what God is doing and migrate to it. We know the prayers of his heart. We know it, Father, and we know that you have been hearing it and we give you thanks. We know as he continues, you will continue to open the door for him. And so we thank you for Wesley and for Angela. We thank you for the faithfulness as faithful stewards to you. We give you thanks. We thank you for Philadelphia Life Center a beautiful community, great people, saints that I have grown to love deeply, to love deeply. We thank you for them, the elders, the core team members, all the saints of that beautiful community. We bring them to you today as we celebrate 25 years of journey 25 beautiful years. There have been many points on that journey. Some were very difficult, very difficult. But Father, you were with them and you sustained them and you kept them safe. And we say thanks to you. Today we bless your name and we honor you. We thank you, Father, for the powerful prayer engine in, inside of this community. And Father, even as you speak more in that area to really strengthen for them to go forward, we pray that all will come on board. Understanding we all have a part to play to make this place dense 
with smoke. We thank you. We bless you. Thank you for a beautiful weekend. Thursday evening, Friday evening, Saturday morning, Saturday evening, this morning, and this afternoon, the final moments of celebration. And Father, let them experience many sudden realities going forward. We bless you and honor you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Wesley, thank you very much. God bless you. Oh. That's when it kicks. But it keeps getting better. Very, very simple, but very, very powerful and profound. These prayer nuggets, we want everyone to hold on to them very tightly. The Lord is tapping us on the shoulder and saying, the pussy vein prayer in this season. Always pray and never give up. Your transactions with God behind the scenes secure the future of your loved ones. Our prayers ascend as a memorial offering to the Lord. Our prayers activate the sudden reality. Our prayers are treated equally by God. God shows no favoritism. All of us should be happy about this. And... Uh, we want to hold on to these things. This is a memorial. This is a, a memorial day. This is a time we'll always remember. A landmark has been set down today. And God is clearly placing a requirement on us to be a community of prayer. Thank you so much, Wingrove, um, for making this impartation. And uh, at this point in our journey, as we look back, for momentum. We must never, ever become slack in the area of standing in prayer. Okay? Very, very excellent. Thank you, Father. Let's give our hands one more time and give God thanks. You have spoken to us. There's an open heaven over us. Thank you, Father. Thank you for speaking to us. You are interacting with us. You want us to succeed, oh, Father. We give you thanks. Thank you for being a tutor to us. You are pointing us in a very specific way, how you want us to be. We give you thanks. Amen. Amen. I don't have to describe how I'm feeling right now. Okay? I don't have words. But let me take some time to welcome some of our guests, and then we have one or two other things to do before we leave. We have some very... All of our guests have special business here. Okay, um, I will, Valerice as well as Winrose's wife. Um, I saw her a while ago, I'm sure she's still here. She's still in here? Okay. Yeah, good to see you, Valerie. And, and Wingrove and Valerie are in Antigua, for those of you who are visiting. And their church is our regional center. It serves a regional center for the uh, Northern Caribbean, so we look to them for leadership and patterns. Yeah, welcome all our visitors and can you just, you know, just clap. This is how I'm the deaf people clap. All right, so just clap for them. Good to have you. Okay, we want to do a few before we are dismissed. We want to, uh, we want to quickly, um, but first, I want to, uh, we have a group of young people. They're going to do a little poem. And while they're doing that, we want uh, Lloyd and Vanessa to come uh, prepare. They're going to honor. There are a, a handful of persons who, are, who have did a full 25-year march with us. And we just thought it nice to just recognize them. Okay, a few of them. So while um, you're getting ready, um, some of our young people put a poem together. So you all, can you all come quickly? And that poem describes our process. Okay? Hurry up. 
And uh, Lloyd is one of our elders here, along with uh, Andre, they're part of the eldership team. His wife, Vanessa, she leads our school, Northgate High School. And they will be leading that process in a minute. Did I tell did I tell you my cousin Marion is on us yet? Did I mention Marion's name? Right, I'm not seeing her, but that's my beautiful cousin. Okay, you guys ready? You all can remove those cords from around so people can hear your mic properly. Ethan, where's your mic? I don't have one. Check. Okay, good morning, everyone. The poem is called Looking back for forward momentum, the chronicles of Philadelphia Life Center. Hello. The journey of PLC began in 1997 when a young man named Wesley Boynes received a word from heaven. It came through a man named Virgil Beard. <laughs> um, the leader of the church that he attended. An opportunity to attend Caribbean Christ for the Nations in Jamaica, he extended. A certain someone seemed to be staring at a mango, ready for the picking. But the mango later found out that it was actually a human being. This love story is Wesley's account of how he and Angela were brought together. Myth or reality, undoubtedly, God crafted this union which will bring forth great fruit thereafter. Jack planted them at Northgate Family Church, a place bursting with activity. People saved again and again, young people coming in like rain. And, but in Wesley's heart, a burden started to grow. People coming in, a lot happening, a lot happening, how well the people grew. A reformation time in earnest began with Congress WBN as our new canopy. A new grace empowered her doings in the years that followed. There were many changes, you see. God, God was shaping us more accurately to become more mature. With great joy, our senior elder Wesley Boynes now led us on with the sound of the feet of children and youths following strong. From a congregation to a company, yes, a community we have become. With the transition, with the transition of, of one, one of our, our beloved pillars, pillars God, God sent, sent a Congress Caleb, Papa Cop, who brought timely comfort and peace and fatherly love. He helped, he helped us see, see our community calling was to be Philadelphia Life Center, our God-given identity. We, we look back, back to the power power momentum for the power of the journey, of the journey with God continues to forge us and make us strong. Thank you. Thank you. Beautiful. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Thank you very much. He wrote that, put it together for themselves, and it was excellent. Okay, um, Lloyd and Vanessa. Uh 
Our senior elder and his wife from the many years in the spirit. Max helped example of thoughtfulness, children, and thoughtfully holding up the hand of our houses. Not gone unnoticed, has helped to create our current reality from which we all draw so much life. Health Center, Council. We will call the names and then we will ask the persons or some, in some cases the representatives to come and take out the token of our appreciation. And you are free to express your gratitude. The first on our, li our list is Eric Ortel. Here since the marvelous age of two. <laughs> Next, we have Rita Summer Hotel. Also here since the time And we would not be complete until we call on Mr. Clifton Hall. And we're going to ask um, if you could come and receive from Mr. Hall again, please. Yes, yeah, since he was a little boy, now producing little boys of his own. <laughs> Next is Kerry Ann Hall. Kerry, you see the crowd of Kerry Ann Hall now? Is it this morning? The Kerry Ann Hall basically grew up in the house of the boys. <laughs> and has been faithful throughout. Um, I'm going to ask the whole number and send him a receipt. Please. Oh, you are coming? No, no. Come, come, come. Come, come, say. You are coming to receive it? Come. Thank you very much. So all these people carry the seed. Oh, very beautiful. Next. We have Almond Graydon. From the days of working in the bank, we were down to here. She took her the journey with us. Thank you so much, Almond. Next is the vivacious Claudine Studio. What would we be without the voice? personality, the drama, <laughs> the heart. Thank you so much. And you cannot call Claudine without Michelle Grant. <laughs> we often wondered how will the husbands of these women manage? <laughs> <laughs> Next, we call on Simone Lu. Ching Chong Chai. Mighty warrior. Mighty, mighty faithful warrior. We love you, Simone. Um, this one came packaged. And we saw this one unpackaged in our midst. None other than Rena Bryce. What a joy, what a joy. And last but by no means least, Miss Vivian Campbell. Mother of mothers. This is the woman who our senior elder always said, if anything happens to me, this is the woman I want my children in the care of. 
valuable woman of prayer. Thank you so much. Community loves you. Really appreciate. And as we move on, we're going to ask Andre and Joy, John, to join us. At this point, I hand over to Lloyd. Okay. All right. Well, there was one more presentation that um, the community wanted to make. And that presentation is to Wesley and Angela Boynes. <laughs> Awesome. <laughs> for the first, the first in 25 years, we're actually surprised, Angela. Angela. <laughs> All right. Oh, I'll come to the future. Uh, thank you. Okay, and um, we actually had the community do a workshop. More surprises. Uh, to describe Angela and Wesley, and uh, it was quite interesting. So there's one describing Angela and one describing Wesley. So a, a plaque is actually being prepared for, for that as yes. well. So we want to say thank you very much for your faithful service. So we couldn't have a 25th anniversary celebration and not um, recognize what you all have done for the community. So that's it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I'm going to invite my sister Claudette to come and share some comments, some remarks. Claudette, thank you very much, guys. I appreciate that. Well, that is um, one of our course senior elders, and um, she's from Bahamian born, but living in Turks and Kikos. And um, that's it to share some comments before we close up. Off. Yeah, you want to stand? You can stand right there. Stand right there. You, you, want, you need something? All right. And Lloyd got that. Wow. Wow. Journeying. You know, it's a well-worn phrase, well-worn saying, that it is the power of the journey. But the, the essence of the journey is always a willingness. You have to be willing to go. I think it was in Isaiah that the question was asked when Isaiah first saw the Lord. And the question was asked of, of Isaiah, who will go for us? Who will go for us? And you see, that is the issue. God is always looking into the hearts of men wanting to know who 
will go for us. And as we heard of the beginnings of Northgate that became Philadelphia Life Center, you had a man that answered. He thought he was coming to Christ for the nations to be trained, maybe even to go back to Trinidad. But God was looking for a willing heart. He was looking for a heart that would be willing to do what God wanted to be done. I had written some notes to myself as I was just thinking about the journey. So I'll start where I ended. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> I'll start where I ended. That we have to be willing always to offer ourselves to the purposes of God in the earth. You know, when we come, we come with dreams. We come with ideologies and we come with thoughts as to what we want based on what is presented to us in our formative years in life. I call them the five filters. The five filters being, first of all, your family unit, because you're born into a family. And it's in that family where your life is crafted and molded. They take you to church. You know how we were taken to the, be christened and they, they um, put you in a Christian context. And so your religion became your next filter. And then after that. And then the refrigerator. In the refrigerator. Education. You know, some of us started our education at a very early age. Some of us at pre-K, at grade three. I'm sorry, three years old. And, and then we moved on through the system. We matriculated and education was very important. And I love what Vingro said today especially to the young Hebronites, be careful where you pitch your tent. Because in the system of the world, there are some places that our hearts yearn and long for, but they are Babylonian systems. And we try to marry them into our context of the kingdom. And sometimes we even get lost because we don't know how to separate and move ourselves from these formative ideologies, philosophies, dreams, and plans that we were introduced to in our formative years. Family, education, religion. The fourth one, culture. We are greatly influenced by our culture. Our culture speaks to what we eat, arts and entertainment, how we dress, and of course, the other formative filters. And then last but not least, our quote unquote, national identity. We identify with our nationality. I call myself a Bahamian, but am I Bahamian? I have the passport, but I also have another passport. <laughs> and in the process of getting a third one. <laughs> so passports are for movement, not identification. In 2 Corinthians chapter five and verse 17, the word of God says, if any man, be in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away, and behold, all things have made a new. What that speaks to, in my understanding, is family as we knew it in the Babylonian system. 
education, religion, culture, national identity. These things are swallowed up in the kingdom of God. Because now our identity becomes a kingdom identity. And so from there, when Grove went back to it today, it stood out to me when he said it in the, in the leadership training on uh, Friday evening, he said, in the year of persistence and insistence, the driving forces of your forward momentum is going to be prayer. Didn't he open that up beautifully? Wow, as I was taking the notes and just transacting with the Holy Spirit and being chiropractically adjusted by him, making the necessary and relevant adjustments in my own heart. I was thanking God for giving me more insight into what he wants as we are going into this harvest knock and moving beyond it for in gathering and on to finalization. God is so amazing that he will not leave you ignorant. He said, it is my wish that you are never ignorant. He always wants us to be aware of what he's doing in the earth, always. And then, of course, we heard Dr. Noel Woodruff who said that he wants a deluge of prayer going up into the heavens. And as Mingrove again so eloquently laid out the whole prayer initiative of the past and took us through each one of those initiatives, what I saw was a tremendous and a sound and foundational building of preparing a people to continue to be persistent and insistent before God and knocking, like he said, drive God crazy. Drive him crazy. He wants to hear from us. He wants to hear from us. And then as I listened to David Francis Cop talk about the burden of the Lord, and he said, that burden being anything and everything which the Lord himself is carrying at any given moment of time. And we hear that God placed the burden in the heart of an ordinary man that he has carried for 25 years to this place. And we know for those of you who have walked with him over the years, you have now captured that burden and you are carrying it with him. So we know that this burden of the Lord has not only been developed as a seed in his life, but the fruit of it is being carried in your lives. And so we know that the purposes of God for this vineyard where you have been placed to be built in Jamaica, the fruit will come forward. We thank God for his faithfulness. And we thank him because he is so, God is just so strategic. Every time I hear Dr. Woodruff says that, you know, he said that I, um, I, I stand in awe of God, that the long suffering of God, of the patience of God, of the willingness of God to be able to wait on us, to come to a place of understanding our purpose in life so that we can partner with his purpose and his plan for us as humans on planet Earth. It's amazing. And so here you are. You are now in forward momentum. You've looked back over this weekend and I know that you have gleaned many, many nuggets over these days. And I am so pleased. It was the speaking of God to my heart to come. It was not in my heart nor mine. But when the Lord spoke it to me and I waited, you know, you have to wait. It's never good to hear God and run. <laughs> 
you must always hear God and wait. And when he said for me to come, I'm like, no. The conditions are not good for traveling. And so you have to confirm that to me. The conditions are not good. And I heard my brother say at about 9.30 on the Monday evening and wrapping up, I am so longing to see you all face to face, open door. <laughs> I said, don't be surprised if you see me because God gave me the open door. I was waiting and I stepped through. I am so happy I came. I have been adjusted and I have been shifted even deeper into the purposes of God as I moved with our community and with the greater Congress into knock number four, the harvest knock. I am excited to be a part of what God is doing in the earth through Congress WBN today. And I am so glad to be connected to you, Wesley. I bless you. I thank God for you. I thank God for the joining. I thank God for the connectivity. And I bless you and Angela. Angela, I bless you. I thank him for the relationship because God works in the earth through relationships. May God continue to journey on with you all beyond the harvest into finalization to the finish. God bless you. Excellent, excellent. Beautiful, really, really excellent. Really, really excellent. All right, what a weekend this is. Lord has put together a powerful time for us. Um, I don't know if uh, Valerie wants to say anything. I know the ladies heard that yesterday. I don't know if she wants to greet the church in general or that's not necessary. We're in two different spaces, so I don't know. I'd have to go downstairs to find out if she's still on. Okay, you, okay, please do. In the meanwhile, I'll just ask two of the ladies who were in a meeting yesterday to just give a quick feedback of the time at Valerie. All right, so um, I'm going to ask um, Simon. That's Simon G. Are they not there? Come, Simon G. And Vanessa, quick, a quick one minute feedback each. Get on, my please. Really excellent time with. Okay. Um, yesterday was a very significant time, a very significant gathering. I mean, God, I don't know. It was just, God spoke. God spoke and it wasn't just words, it was an impartation of grace that came to the woman. Um, I left the meeting with a, a renewed sight of the value of the connectivity of our world and a sense of deep appreciation for the treasure of our senior women. I mean, as all of them shared, I just sat there and I think we have absolutely no reason to fail. That's, that's, that's a thought I had, not one reason, because look at what God has given us. And I'm um, really hopeful that as a community, we would take what God gave us and implement it 
it is very clear what um, Pastor Bazden said. It is very clear how God wants us to proceed. That issue of relationship and receiving ranking and remaining within the community and being women of prayer, it, it was very, very clear. And if we do this, the momentum will never stop. Very good, beautiful. <clears throat> Simon, just like two of the guys who was in the Hebron to come and give a quick one minute feedback. All right, on that. Who's here? I'll probably ask um, uh, okay. um, probably uh, Edward and Edward to be online and uh, <laughs> Edward and Andre. Go ahead. Okay, good morning, everybody. Yes. Um, I think yesterday really went very, very deep into our hearts. It was very, I would say, chiropractic. Um, it was really, really a treasure to have our um, senior ladies share with us yesterday because we saw process. We were able to see how they were able to pull the word and apply, put it into practice, you know, life, life. Because we have to live, we have to navigate through circumstances. And it was really made very clear. I think also one of the things that was significant was just a sense of them coming alongside us to ensure that we are empowered to continue the journey. Um, I walked away carrying them more in my heart and just being more appreciative of the context that we have and being more committed to building out more relationships, covenant. Um, it was really a very good time. Um, there was also the fact of you know, who in, know, knowing who we are as women and being strong in that identity. Ordinary women, but very powerful and lethal. So those are some of the things that I took away from the meeting. Very good. Okay, two of the guys who were at Hebron meeting last year. Um, two short feedback. You can go first, um, Edward. Okay, good morning, everyone. Yes, um, I think yesterday's meeting, are you hearing me? No, oh, don't go ahead. Okay, great. Yesterday's meeting was, was another powerful uh, meeting that we had, I think, and you know, if I want to um, use an analogy, you know, I think our arsenal has gotten bigger. Yesterday, we were given bigger guns yesterday as, as, as Hebronites. And the, the, um, the ammunition that we were given was really, you know, one of really fellowship, you know, really ensure that we check ourselves, you know, go inside, do our self-introspection. I personally, you know, started that process yesterday you know, really um, um, diving into a personal um, check-in and see where am I in terms of my journey? Where am I in terms of my fellowship? What is it that I need to do? What are my things that I need to ramp up? And I'm seeing that, you know, yesterday's meeting really, really empower me as a Hebron, you know, and um, just when I left the meeting yesterday and, and wrote home, you know, Kadir, my son, was actually in the meeting. I was really glad for that. He was able to hear, you know, um, what men were discussing. And I had a conversation with him coming home. You know, so that in itself was a part of the process because one of the things that we got in the meeting was that, you know, we have to have, we have to have that thing inside of us for us to impart it. And, 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 and you know, he was able to, be, be able to hear what, I should be imparting so as a standard check, standard bearer. 
you know, so here I'm um, knowing that he was there and um, he knows exactly what is expected of me. You know, I now need to step up to that plate, not just in my personal family context, but also in the, in the, in the wider context of the community. You know, so for me, it was a very powerful meeting. And as I said before, I know I'm, I'm given a bigger gun um, in, inside of the kingdom of God to really unleash and to make things happen. Very good. Okay, good. good morning still. Good morning, everyone. Um, for me, um, it's about two things. One was um, what Sister Claudette actually shared, you know, um, is my home a secure place, you know? Um, and so, you know, I had to ask myself the questions all over again, you know, is my home a secure place for the presence of the Lord? Is it a place where God can touch down and continue to reveal himself? You know, um, is, is my marriage safe? Is my children safe? You know, um, these are things I have to constantly ask myself as I continue to check, you know, my heart, you know, before the Lord. So um, that was one. And also from uh, Eric, um, he mentioned a few things. Um, I think some of the things that actually stood out to me was um, having a renewed commitment to follow until the Lord comes. You know, we must continue to give ourselves relentlessly. And for me, you know, um, um, in that I'm really seeing that my posture really, it has to actually change in terms of how I pursue the Lord. That word relentlessly carries a whole different connotation and meaning to it. All right. I can be relaxed. All right. I can be at ease. All right. But I have to keep pursuing. And it also ties into what um, Pastor Wingrove was actually sharing this morning. All right. We continue to pray. Just never give up. Just keep going forward. Um, something that Eric mentioned that Dr. Woodruff actually said to him, you know, when he was, he never went into any explanation or whatever, but just stay close to Steve Allion. All right. And so in that, I actually saw that, you know, one of the things that I want to actually ramp up some more is really exposing my life more to Wesley and to Lloyd. You know, and so, um, yeah, that is what that is what really um, struck home to me in a very significant way, because I know that as God continues to build us as a community, you know, our relationship, you know, is really, really very important. Everything actually have to go to a new level of pursuing relationship relentlessly and following relentlessly, submitting myself relentlessly, you know, so that God can actually get what he wants. Very good. Okay, so there you got it. Some quick over uh, feedback of really, really exceptional time that we had in God. Um, Sister Valerie, Handy, uh, Ingro. Yes, she is. Okay, so there's a few things that they hear, Sister Valerie. Yes, I am. <laughs> I'm Handy. Yes. Um, and good day to everyone. Yes. Before I say anything, I just want everybody to know that I am fine, that I am well, because I know they were a little, you know, concerned yesterday, but I'm good. Um, actually, well, after I ate one of the oranges from the basket, it just made me feel so much better. So thank you for the fruits. They helped. Um, but I, above and beyond that, I just want to say how very touched and um, motivated and strengthened um, that I have been from just interacting with PLC. Um, Friday evening, I, I thought it was really a lot of food for thought. And um, our, our minds cannot be blank at this time. We have been given so much. It's not too much because we have the time little by little, you know, bit by bit 
We don't have to try to bite everything at the same time. We take a little and we digest it, a nugget here, an emphasis there, and we, we meditate, we pray about the things that God has been speaking to us individually about because we all have individual emphases. And uh, so I, I think that what we need to do, uh, uh, I'll say what I do is to just listen to the things God's talking to me about personally in the presentations, which nugget he wants me to really zoom in on, focus on which emphasis he wants me to zoom in on and focus on for me personally, for my family, for my um, people group, growth group, whatever the case is. And those are the things that I meditate on, I pray about, I send up our prayers as I do my, my chores, as I leave the home to go to a meeting or, or whatever. These are the things that occupy my mind. Not every, every, everything but the thing that God wants me to pay attention to. And I think this approach could help others who are inundated with a whole lot of, you know, resource to contend with. So um, we have had a lot, but each one of us knows the things that God is seeking to impart personally. And I think as long as we approach these resources in that way, that um, they will be more beneficial to us than if we try to, you know, pawn everything at the same time. And um, I think that this time, uh, it feels to me like God has really opened a portal for us, for me personally, and I'm sure for PLC and those who were locked in because um, the meetings were very engaging and you couldn't help but be totally locked in to what God is downstreaming to us in the moment. And I, I felt like a door, like a portal open for us to really um, advance into, but advance um, with a certain posture you know, to continue to carry the things of God in our hearts and to become what he is seeking to, to build in us and to develop and, 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 to, and to become the shape that he actually wants to um, accomplish in all our lives. So happy anniversary. And um, I wish you 24 more years if the Lord um, tarries for so long. And Wesley and Angela, you've been doing above and beyond. And uh, we know that it is the grace that has given you the momentum and the speed and the wisdom that's required. Um, congratulations again. We breathe in, we breathe out 25 years. We breathe in 25 years and we breathe out 25 years. So God bless you and Claudette, it was good catching up with you as well and all the other ladies. Beautiful, thank you very much. Beautiful. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Okay, we have basically come to the end of a meeting. We have one more item of our dancers want to do something for you. All right. And uh, so they will just express the Lord to you in, with their talents, and then we will end our. Thank you, Lord. I didn't know what I was Welcome back. Oh, 
the process may be hard at times, but the journey is worth it. I am willing to fulfill your plans. I'm ascending to perfection. It's a new It's a new grace yeah. It's a new face These are different days It's a new place you are taking